What's up? What's up, man? How are you? I'm great. How are you? You're like in a dungeon or something? What's going on? I'm in like the, I don't know, some abandoned house or building. All right. Vince is here too. Ready and... What's up, guys? Can you hear me? Vince Pichel. Hey, bro. Welcome to the Brandon MA Roasted Podcast. It's me, Adam Hunter. We got a great show. We got me. We got Vince, who's naked. I think he was talking to some girl before or something. I don't know what's going Oh, there you go. Uh, Vince, and we have Ween Dog. Vince, up, dude? huge win, man. Congratulations. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, man. Hell I yeah. Was, dude. I was going nuts. You should have seen me jumping up and down. I, I was going <laughs> crazy until I heard your speech, and you didn't mention either me or Ween Dog. Uh, <laughs> but, but before that, I was going crazy, man. Congratulations. How, I mean, how good does that feel? It was really good, dude. It, that that was honestly a really big win for me. Um, I was kind of surprised I was the favorite. I'm not used to that, especially against someone like Jim Miller when I've been counting out against guys like Roosevelt Roberts or like Joaquin Silva that you don't even fucking know about, right? So yeah. I thought that was kind of weird, but uh, dude, it was a it was a fucking awesome win, honestly for me. Uh, best win of my career, hands down. Um, feels good, man. <laughs> I mean, you beat a Hall of Famer. I mean, how good does that feel? That was awesome. Now, I got to say, the, fir the first round, you, I, I was scared. Uh, the first round did not go over. Uh, uh, I mean, he took you down. He had your back. And they were like, Vince is in a lot of trouble. They're like, man, Vince is in a lot of trouble. No Rogan was like, oh, this is not good. This is the last place he wants to be. How worried, <laughs> how worried were you when he had your back? I wasn't that worried, bro. Um, I, dude, PC, this, this is the thing. People don't know about me, dude. People don't know how good of a grappler I am because probably because of the Gillespie fight mainly. Um, but like, dude, I roll black belts all the time. I have motherfuckers on my back that should be strangling, that, that strangled motherfuckers with the greatest of ease, right? So I'm used to people being on my back. I'm not stupid. I know how to defend. I know the basic steps. And if you know the basics, there's really not much to worry about, right? And Besides, like, it's MMA, so the, the opportunity that he looks for a punch gives me space to get up and move, so I'm aware of that kind of stuff, but there's a lot of variables, and, and honestly, like, I just, I just had all the confidence in my world in my grappling. Now, the second round, you came back with a vengeance. Almost stopped him. You almost stopped him. Uh, yeah. How close do you think you were to getting that finish? Honestly, if there was another, like, 15, 20 seconds, I probably would have finished him. That's why I got up and yelled. I was pissed, man. I, I was like, fuck, I wanted the finish. <laughs> It seemed like you were yelling at him. Yeah, I know, but I, I mean, I kind of was, but I was just like, oh, man, like I wanted <laughs> like that, that, like I got cheated out of a finish because of time, right? Yeah, but then, then you started the third round and, and you like put your fist out. So like, did you feel bad for yelling at him? And you were like, hey, I just want to let you know, I still respect you. We're, like, we're still cool. No, not at all. It wasn't that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then why did you put your fist out? Sportsmanship, man. But but you just yelled at the guy's face at twelve seconds earlier. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I, I just I yelled, but it wasn't like it wasn't it's all like, that testosterone. Oh, you're a fucking piece of shit, right? Yeah, my I just I was adrenaline just, I was ding dingling right there, right? My dick was on hard right there, so I was just fucking raging <laughs> out. Now the third round, right? You were you were beating him, you were beating him, and then like with like three minutes left, he reversed you, and I was like, no, fuck, and then. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, in, in the third round, it was, I was, I was, it was close. He almost got me with that guillotine, man. Like, I was defending it, and it, I was good, and I had him pinned against the cage, so I was like, okay, I'm safe, right? He's not going to catch me. He adjusted. I was like, shit, it got a little worse, so I tried to defend a little better. Then he adjusted again, and then I got real bad, and I was like, fuck, like, I'm choking. I need to, I need to just do the old white belt move and fucking try to rip my head out, and hopefully it comes out because of the sweat. And it worked, you know what I mean? I'm, I mean, he was gassed the fuck out anyway, and I'm sure his arms were blown out, too. But uh, luckily, I got out because I mean, if I didn't, if if my head didn't pop out, I probably I would have had a tap. I would I would have gone out or tap. No, but now I was I was saying I'm like this is the kind of guy that's gonna go out without tapping. Yeah, I would have uh, I would have let him put me out. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you stood up, you had about two minutes left. He was on your back. There was a look on your face like, "Fuck, I'm tired." Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> but was, but cause I, but you're like, but I know I could win this but it's going to take a lot, but I know I can do it. Was it yeah. one of those moments in your life where you're like, I, I, I got to go for it? 
It was. Yeah, I had I had to dig a little bit right there, and it was it was a little bit of like I'm tired and also frustrated, right? Because I had him. I was on his back and I fucked up. I tried to jujitsu him instead of just beating the hell out of him, which I should have just done um, while I was on his back. So I kind of fucked up there. But then I had him in a crucifix and I screwed up my crucifix on him. So like, I was, I like, I got a little irritated at myself, right? I was like, God, you're a fucking idiot. You just fucked up, you dumbass. You had him in like, I had him in prime position to finish him and I, and I just fucked up. So it was a little bit of frustration on top of the fatigue. And I was like, fuck, I need to get up and just, and just show that. Like, this, this is my fight. I can't let him take it away from me. I can't let him take his last 30 seconds from me. But you did it, man. You did it. I was so happy for you. Um, it was just, yeah. Now, I was concerned a week before the fight. I was like, how much do you weigh? You were 23 pounds over. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and you're like, oh, this is an easy weight cut. And I'm like, ah, uh, fuck, man. I'm like, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> I was like 23 pounds. Then the, the, <laughs> night, the night before I called you, or that or that afternoon before weigh-ins, but 24 hours, you're like, I'm like, how's it going? You're like, oh, I got 11 pounds, simple. I'm like, 11 pounds in one day? Yeah, well, we dehydrate a lot of water, right? We dehydrate ourselves down. But uh, me, typically, I used to dehydrate myself from like 170 to 175 pounds in that, somewhere in that weight rate, in that weight range. I would start dehydrating down to 155. And that shit fucking sucks, man. It, it's just horrible, right? Like that's, that's a, it's a part of fighting I do not like. And it's a part of fighting a lot of people don't realize is that that kind of shit that we have to go through before the actual fight, right? Like to me, cutting weight is harder than, than the actual fight itself. The, the fight is just like, it's just like a mental push, right? You got to go. But I think that the cutting weight is just so much more of a mental push than, than anything else that, that we have to do for a fight, man. And, and it just sucks. I fucking hate cutting weight. Now, did you use the UFC, um, their whole, uh, what what's it called? The UFC performance? Apex? Era? Yeah, the Apex. Yeah, yeah, we're in the Apex. Um, they actually hooked me up, so it was pretty cool, man. They took care of us this time. I mean, the COVID thing's a fucking bunch of bullshit, and I hate it, but um, it actually it actually made things a little a little better for us as far as, like, or for me anyway, as far as, like, the week of the fight. Um, where I'm staying, my workout room and things like that, because they kind of gave everyone enough room and, and social distance everyone. So it's not like when I, when I fought in New York, when I fought Gillespie, I was in a fucking 10 by 10 box, man. Like I, there wasn't even enough room for me to do a cartwheel in the, in the warm up area. So it's like, how much is the warm up for a, for like one of the biggest fights of my life in this little ass prison cell. Right. But they literally gave me like a whole two bedroom suite and then another whole two bedroom suite with a huge mat area that I could train in with my own little sweat box that I could dehydrate myself in too, which was fucking wow. awesome. Wow. Now, you didn't call anyone out after the fight. You didn't call <laughs> anyone. Uh, how come? Honestly, because I don't know. It's not like, I feel like I'm going to call someone out if I hate someone, I want to fight someone, but I, I don't really have anyone in my head, right? Like, in my head, I was like, okay, I have a, it's a short notice fight against Jim Miller. So he's honestly all I was worried about. He's the only thing I was really worried about. Um, and, the only other person I want to talk shit to is probably EA Sports for not putting me in the fucking video game because of the douchebags. Dude. I thought you were going to call out Gavin Newsom. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would have been epic. <laughs> Should now, I have next time? Now I, just, when you I, wore, still got, I still got time on Twitter. Now, when you wore your mask to the octagon, was that the only time you wore your mask during this pandemic? Yeah, I, I got yelled at a lot out there for not wearing a mask. Real, who yelled at you? The fucking stupid bitch-ass commission. Um, <laughs> the security guards tell me I got to wear a mask. You know what I mean? I'm just like, fuck off. Like, you're my fucking dad. Like, suck a dick. Yeah. Oh, was this mustache, was that was that homage to uh, Don Fry since he's been on the podcast and you're a Don Fry fan? Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know what's funny is a lot of people love the mustache. I, I love all the comments that I was getting about the mustache. Dude, Twitter was going crazy. That just means you have to grow it. Keep growing it. Keep, you know, tending to it. Make it five times the size it is right now. And, dude, you'll be on the cover of the next UFC game. Oh, well, I'm mean, definitely not saving this motherfucker. It's staying. It's staying. Well, I mean, full being closed, it didn't affect you because you're not allowed near them with that fucking mustache. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, now, that, dude, I was so I was so proud of you, man. Uh, I thought you were gonna call out. You told me you were gonna call out Ween Dog. Ween Dog, how disappointed were you when you didn't get the call out? I was not disappointed. I was highly relieved because that would be very <laughs> awkward to explain why uh, this UFC fighter is calling me out in front of my family on live TV. <laughs> in the world. Like guys, uh, 
Yeah, Whatever you do, uh, this is what goes on in MMA roasting. Ween dog. <laughs> <laughs> did you think about? Were you actually considering calling out Ween Dog or no? Yeah, I was. I thought that'd be kind of funny if I did. That would be like that's like the biggest inside joke of <laughs> all time. Like I know, but I knew if, I, if I did that, everyone would be like, I know for sure. Everyone be like, who the fuck? Like, imagine if I was talking to Rogan and I was, he's like, you know, who, who do you want to fight next? I want to fucking beat the hell out of Ween Dog. He'd be like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> Dude, that'd like, be you know hilarious. I mean? like, <laughs> is, is that a new guy? Is that a new guy we just got signed? Was he a contender? He's no, German. I think a lot of people are taking you seriously now. Um, but I, I feel like a lot of people during this pandemic, they look really good at their fight. Then they take another fight in like two weeks notice and lose that fight. Don't fall into that trap. You know, like really give yourself a, a chance to fight the next guy. But are you ready to fight like if they called you for next week? Uh, I mean, not next week. I'm a little banged up. My elbows hurt from Jim Miller's face and like, my ankle hurts from kicking them and some stuff like that. And I got a little baby black eye. But, I mean, other than that, yeah, I'm not banged up at all. So, I already talked to Shelby, told him I'm, I'm ready to get back at it as soon as I'm, as soon as I'm not banged up anymore and, and get back in the gym. You know what's crazy? We talked about the uh, Colbert Gasolin fight, how he didn't defend the heel hook right. And then you ran the yeah. heel hook. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, were you thinking? Yeah, but I defended it right, right? I didn't get caught, did I? No, no, you didn't. But I think Kelvin helped you out, man. Because <laughs> I think you saw what not to do. Now I'm actually you... surprised. I thought Miller was gonna. I thought Miller was gonna be totally trying to take the fight to the ground. Um, I think. Uh, I think when he when he when he tried to take get me in the first round against the fence, and he realized how strong I was. I think he kind of realized he wasn't gonna be able to get me down very easily, and he kind of was just waiting for me to throw a kick, which is how he got me down when he did. Yeah, dude, you hit a couple beautiful head kicks. Oh, oh my god, he fucking ate that first one too. I have no idea how he ate that first head kick. Like I didn't throw it super hard, but I threw it pretty diligently and he fucking just like walks right through it. I was like, this guy's a fucking terminator, dude. Well, that's the thing. I was like, I was telling people, I'm like, this is gonna stop him in the first. Uh then I was like to myself, like, I hope it doesn't go past the first because I'm like 23 pounds is a lot of fucking weight to cut. And I'm like, oh God, I hope it doesn't gas. But then when they were like, well, the only person to ever stop him was Dan Hooker. And I'm like, fuck, that guy hit so hard. Like, to stop Oh, he's going to stop Miller? Via strikes. Yeah, I thought you were going to knock out Miller in, like, the first round or second round. But then everyone's like, dude, this dude got a hard head. And then I went, he when does. you, he when does, you him, I was like, wow, he really does have a hard head. Holy shit. And, like, I'm not, dude, I'm not going to lie. My, my elbow really fucking hurt. My, both my elbows hurt from hitting him, dude, from elbowing him. Like, his fucking head is solid, bro. Well, didn't in the first round, how prepared were you to defend that, um, what was that choke he did? That weird uh, this the one that CB Dalloway used to use on people. Uh, oh, like that reverse arm and guillotine. Yeah, but it's called so. What's it called? The wing dog. That one where it's like a front headlock, but you put your hooks in. And uh, fuck, I forgot the name of the. Uh, it was like a really. I don't know a technical term, term, but it's necktie. Yeah, yeah, no, not... necktie. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, he wasn't. I'm not worried about that. I know how to defend that. Um, the one when, when he had me in on the ground, he was kind of on my back, and that's what he's talking about, where he's like almost like a guillotine, but it yeah. was a weird looking guillotine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like I, I don't I don't even know the technical name for that, but I I just call it like a I for me it's like a fall off guillotine because I do it from the back too. I do that same choke, so I'm well aware of it. But the position we were in, he didn't he wouldn't have a. Uh, it was just it was a bad move for him to go for that. He should have he should have went just for a straight guillotine, a norm guillotine, if anything. Well, dude, I was so proud of you, Vince, because I know how hard you work. I like, I like know, you know what you put yourself through, and I feel like people are finally waking up to how good you are. You look so much stronger than him, though, too. Like, holy shit! But uh, Greg Wilson came. Oh, yeah. We got, we got Vince Michelle off a of big win, dude. How, how fucking psyched are you, Greg? That's right, dude. Pilcher, man. The for me, the most exciting thing was the stash. I mean, it was it was e as impressive as the fight. It, it looked really good, brother. You, you had a straight build the butcher look going the whole. I knew you were gonna kill him. You look like you went down on a Persian girl. <laughs> now, now you don't want to say how to do a forward. Now, did you bring your girl with you, Vince? I uh, no, she stayed home to watch my feed him. Oh, okay, there you go. All right, now, were you able to watch the Steep A versus DC, uh, DC fight, like, from the actual? Can you hear me? Adam's having connectivity problems. Yeah, no. Is it my connection? Can you, is it better now? Fuck. It's your fucking Walmart internet, bro. Is it better now? Hold on. Is it better? Yeah, we can hear you and see you're good. You're just, like, frozen for a couple seconds. Okay. Yeah, it's really way, fuzzy, speaking too. Of, speaking of frozen, Greg Wilson, 
I think that you need to suit Frozen, by the way. You ever see the movie Frozen? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's that character that looks just like me. Dude, I mean, dude, every, listen, every Disney movie has a character that looks just like me. Look at Beauty and the Beast. I'm the foo. Listen, I, I, I'm in every the Disney Who's movie. The he's he's uh, the big guy, whatever the other guy's name. His little sidekick. But the fucking, the, the really uh, nice, <laughs> the, but like the really nice troll from Frozen. That like helped, yeah, no, uh, I'm telling you, there's a guy that, look, the other one, the one Coco, there, there was a guy that looked exactly like me in Coco. I'm, <laughs> I'm in every animated movie, dude. I'm a walking cartoon. Uh, so you need to uh, cut your motherfucking movie check, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. They need to just go ahead and hire me. I don't know what they're, what they're doing. So Vince, were you able to watch the DC Stipe from Cage Side? Uh, no, they didn't. They, they basically fucking shit me, interviewed to interview to interview. I didn't even have time to put a fucking shirt on. They shipped me for like four interviews and then and they shuttled me out of that place. It was so still like, haven't put one on. It was like they were releasing. <laughs> yeah, I still got that one on. It was like they were releasing me from prison, man. Just trying to get me the fuck out of there. Well, let's talk about that fight. So, I thought that Stipe definitely won round two and three. He didn't win round one, four or five. I felt like could have went either way. I, I wasn't upset with the victory. I was happy Stipe won, but you could easily argue that like. Round two was a 10-8, and then you can give the other rounds to DC. That could have been a draw. Like, it was a very, very close fight. Yeah, but that's why you don't trust those fucking judges, man. Yeah. yeah. Now, well, I mean, what did you guys think of the fight in general? It was great. I it was a good fight. All right, one at a time. Greg? <laughs> <laughs> we all got, we all got. No, I just, the eye poke thing I thought was a much bigger issue, and I was surprised they didn't bring the doctor in to look at it. And I was surprised they didn't stop the fight. I mean, you saw it at the end. I mean, it was from that moment forward. That eye was fucking just, and he was saying, I can't see, I can't see. I mean, isn't that when you're supposed to call the fight? Yeah, but if he says he can't see, then the fight's over, right? And then the, didn't, the, didn't the referee, didn't he say that, uh, quit bitching, you got punched? You didn't get yeah, punched. yeah, basically, he said it wasn't a poke, it was a punch. And it, it, it was definitely a poke. It's on the replay. Was, yeah. Right, but he doesn't have the advantage of replay in the, in the cage, so. That's true, oh. but you know what? There are TV screens above the cage, so when they do play the replay, he can see the replay. Ah, uh, that's a dick move then, because it was super obvious in the replay. Well, the yeah, thing, also, I mean, the whole thing was like, I, you would feel worse for DC if he hadn't poked Stipe, like, a minute before. <laughs> <any guy>. Yeah. <laughs> And also, if like the first round, the first time they fought, he also Stipe also got poked. That kind of changed the outcome. I thought, I thought that you know Stipe did enough to win, but it wasn't like a clear cut victory. I, I was surprised. It seemed like the weight that he lost, DC gained. Um, oh my God, DC! <laughs> the funniest part was the way the the shorts would slip. Because I'm a fat guy, I have a, be a belly, and I know the way the pants when you try to put it around your belly button, they just slide right beneath your gut. <laughs> and he tried to do every. Every time the round was over, he'd go back to his corner, pull those shorts back up, and then they'd be up for about like 17 seconds. And then they'd slowly work their way back. <laughs> you know, DC to was, me, that was, was the lighter. greatest struggle of the fight. <laughs> DC was lighter than he's been in all, all three of their fights, too. He's really? slowly, the first fight, he was his heaviest. In the middle fight, he lost a few pounds. And in this fight, he was the lightest that he's fought uh, Miocic. I just think he's a really hard fight for Stipe. Like, for some, like the, I think the way he, how short he is, how hard he punches, how good of a wrestler. I mean, you can't but get But he didn't use like, the wrestling. Yeah, he didn't really use his wrestling much. Stipe kind of shut him down pretty good. Stipe was the one going for takedowns. Like, yeah. yeah. I, that was I wild. Know, yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know what? Cormier was like, I think Cormier's punches were faster than I expected them to be. He seemed like super sharp with his, with his straight punches, which kind of surprised me, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it was a good fight, and, I, you know, I would watch it again. I hope DC doesn't retire, because I would hate to see him retire like that, you know, like on, like, an eye poke loss to a guy that he might have won. It was just a weird – I mean, he should have pulled – he should have put a Henry Cejudo and quit fucking retired as soon as he beat him the first time. He kind of did it to himself now. Fuck. All right. You don't want to see had, him go out on three losses in a row. at that point, right? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy when he didn't know where he was. Like, in the sec at the third round, he goes in the stool and, like, asks for a menu. Like, I mean, he had no <laughs> idea. He really had no idea. I did idea. that shit, too. 
Really? I did that too. Yeah, after the second round, I went to Miller's corner because I thought it was my corner. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? And then Herb's like, you're in the wrong corner. And I was like, oh, shit, my bad. How do you guys oh, even tell, like, which corner is which? I've always wondered that. Like, how do you tell whose corner is who? Because there's, like, no, like, signal or label that says this is, you know, the red corner or blue corner, yeah, right? Yeah, there's really not. You just kind of you just kind of got to, like, look around and recognize who's behind you or in front of you when you're in your corner and when you first get in there. But – Something like that was the first time I've ever been turned around in a cage like that, where I was like, no, no fucking clue where I was. Well, is it wow. because it's a, a smaller cage? Uh, no, it's just I don't know. I, maybe I just wasn't. I wasn't really concentrating. I was like too busy, like into the fight. You know, I was super into the fight. My concentration was there. Now, um, you know, you were, uh, can I ask something? Maybe you guys already covered this, and if so, we can just skip it. But Vince, did you feel like you started? You not started slow. People always say you've explained this before that people say you start slow. But really, you're spending that first round kind of breaking the guy down, figuring what he's doing, and then you really come on in the second and third. And I would, to me, that's, I mean, I, I was like, it does seem like you started starting slow. Like, if I had heard you say that, that's exactly what I would have said about that first round. Is that what was happening? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I do start slow, but it's not really like I'm starting slow. I'm doing exactly what you said. I'm studying the guy. Um, in the case of Miller, I was watching how he moved. I was seeing which way he moved towards me. Which, right. um, I mean, I was the first one that threw, right? I threw that, that hook cross combo and hit and landed first. So, like, it's not that I was starting slow, but I was just – I learned the guy in the first round. So, right. I was watching his movement, seeing how, how he was reacting to me, how he was – how he wanted to attack me. I was also listening to his corner, listening to what they were saying so I can get a better idea of how they were coaching him for me, you know? Because I know, like – People adjust for me. When, when I fight guys, they adjust for me. I've never fought a guy and had them fight like they fought someone else. They've always, they've always been adjusting. And so every time I fought someone, they're always, like, so different than I, than I, than I train for sometimes because, I don't, like, you know what I mean? They make adjustments just like I do. And yeah. so that's a big part of it. And I get chewed up with my coaches for that shit, for doing that, but – Fuck them. They're not in there. Well, that, yeah. that's just what I could think. That's all I could think watching the fight. I'm like, come on. Let's, what, what? And I'm like, he's doing that start. To, oh, right. He explained this. Okay. And I actually was like, at that point, I'm like, well, you know, he said on the show that uh, he's actually taking his time. You know, <laughs> I, like I was the fucking expert on Vince Pichel all of a sudden. My wife was <laughs> nodding along. I'm like, you see, he said on our show that this is how he does it. He, it looks like he's starting slow, but really it's analytical. Vince, why are you formulating a, a formula right now? And, but Vince, uh, how are your hands so low? Are your hands usually that low? Yeah, my hands are always pretty low. Because I was like, whoa, I was, I was a little nervous. The hands were like, you were like stepping on your hands and stuff. Well, my hands are low, but like he threw, he threw some head kicks and he threw shots. Like my hands are up the block, right? Right. I'm just like, I, I usually keep my hands in the middle. I keep my hands somewhere around the middle, which is like, like rib, rib cage length, because I want to be able to, I want to be able to, to defend a takedown, especially against Miller. And I also want to be able to uh, block my body and then block the head because it's not that big of a deal for me to go from like right here to right here. Right. But it's hard for me to do this, to go down like this, but then it also exposes me more than I want to be exposed for certain things. I know, things. it's crazy, because, like, with that mustache and your hands like that, you look like a bare-knuckle boxer, like an old-school. Like yeah, like old-school, like, Pomo, here we are. <laughs> I feel like we should all take our shirts off in solidarity. <laughs> I, was, I was honestly super – I was honestly super waiting for him to just be shooting and shooting and shooting on me. I had a feeling he was just going to throw punches and then just come shoot on me. That's – that's how I thought the fight was going to go. I thought he was going to come at me just like Gregor did, like not looking to fight, just to straight make it a grappling match. Yeah, so let's talk about – so John Jones called out Stipe. Now, if it was a pre-Usada John Jones, I would think that Jones would, would win this, like the way he was coming on. But these last couple fights, John Jones is like – it's been very close. The, the, Man, uh, cocaine to hell drug, brother. Cocaine and steroids and yeah, whatever else. Uh, I kind of feel like – I don't know if he beat Stipe. At one point, I said he would beat Stipe. Not this version of John Jones. Thoughts, guys? Well, I he hardly ever fights John anymore. Him. Sorry, go ahead, Vince. I think John Jones would beat Stipe. Wow. I, I think he would. Stipe, I like Stipe is a really good fighter, and I think Stipe has a really good chance of beating him. But I think the majority of the time, like let's say out of ten fights, I say John Jones wins like six, seven times out of ten. 
I uh, was why? thinking that, that Stipe was going to retire just like DC. I, Me thought, too, dude. I thought we were going to have a double retirement ceremony. I think you should retire too because I've ne- there's like no fighter in the UFC right now that has as much prominent CTE, in my opinion, than Stipe Miocic oh, because he's on. slurring his speech so First much. Of all, he was always like that. He was really? always like that. He's a firefighter. He was- he breathes in smoke every day. And he, and all right, well, I take it back then. He also hates talking. He's like, he's like the, one of the worst, best interviews. Cause like you, 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 but, you, but that I don't think nothing. discounts Wing Dog's point though. I no, he's talking about something he noticed. Right? Yeah, yeah. I have. I, I, I just say for his safety. I don't want to see him go in there against Francis again and get knocked the fuck out. You know, he just had a daughter. I don't want to see him live a life of you know memory loss. You know, all this crazy shit that comes with brain damage just because he wanted to keep fighting in his career when he was already like the most decorated heavyweight champion in the UFC history. You know, wouldn't it be great if you could have like selective CTE? Like you like rem- like you rem- like don't remember certain things. Like you go out and cheat on your wife. Do you do that? You're like I don't remember anything. Like, <laughs> I was married, or I'm married. <laughs> I mean, I, I pretend I pretend to do that anyway. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I think all I think that's the first defense for all men. <laughs> <laughs> Temporary memory. I don't, I don't. I don't remember. I don't know what's wrong. Oh, did you say that? I don't remember. I don't remember hearing you say that. Maybe you, maybe you weren't saying it to me. I, I don't. Yeah. Vince, I don't did you uh, did you withhold from sex for two weeks? No, I didn't. Oh wow. Look at you. That's a bullshit wives' tale, man. I don't fuck that, dude. Why, 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 yeah. why would wives want to have that tale? I think it'd be the opposite. It'd be fucking like other I think wives want to get laid. Um, all right. Well, so, I sugar. Some, some wives don't get laid. So, maybe that's the excuse they made up for fighters, the ones good, that are dating. Very fighters. good point. Very good point. Too busy banging their side pieces. Yeah. I always think about Rocky when he's like, women weak in legs. Women weak in legs. <laughs> that's, what I always I, that's what I always thought the reason was. I always oh, thought yeah, they're weak in legs. You're doing too much thrusting. I don't know. I just, I would always hear that. I thought that was it. I don't know if you're ever going to have a better character than Burgess Meredith as a uh, fucking Mickey and Rocky. Oh, God, the best. Like, the- yeah, hey, Rock, you're going to eat lightning and crap. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, he, he was the best. Like, like, you believed anything he said. It's like, really <laughs> nothing he could have said. He was chasing that chicken around, dude. That was the best. Oh. By the way, so before we get into the next fight, so I watched the fights at Russell Peters' house. Russell invites me over, uh, uh, my friend Taruna's birthday, and Chuck Liddell is there, right? Wow. So I never met Chuck Liddell. So I meet Chuck Liddell, and we're talking, and I, I was like, hey, if you heard Tito is running for Congress, Tito is running for like state assembly in, in California. So I was like, Chuck, uh, maybe you should run against him. How funny would that be? Like, he can't get away. <laughs> And Chuck was like, I think I'd beat him in Huntington Beach, actually, where he's running. So hopeful, so hopefully he'll be going to <laughs> Well, then, I think, I think he, he would have to move to Huntington Beach, I think, to pull that off. <laughs> but that, how funny would that be? Like, it'd be, like, Tito just can't get away from Chuck Liddell. Like, he would yeah. be so- He would be so, for the rest of his life. <laughs> he would be so pissed, right? Then uh, I asked him about Uncle Creepy telling us the stories about how so Chuck Liddell used to bang like three at a time back in the day, and Creepy would just walk in the room jerking off, and uh, and Chuck would be like, "Go okay, take care," and he'd be like, "Go take." That's what I said. He said, "Go take care of my friend." So everything that is that is true and more disturbing stories. I can't tell him on the story, on the podcast because Chuck's not here. But <laughs> just so you know, I've heard some even worse fucking stories than that. And I was wearing my Kevin Randleman shirt, right? <laughs> it was awesome. So I'm talking to Chuck about Randleman. He tells me the story how the night before Randleman fights Crow Cop, right? The night before, uh, Randleman's with Mark Coleman, and they go, Chuck, what should we do tomorrow? And Chuck's like, you guys have no game plan? They're like, no. <laughs> they had no Oh, my plan. God. <laughs> so Chuck says, look, man, you want to get either in, all the way in or all the way out. Like, either, you know, you don't stay in his range. And then Randleman knocks out fucking Crow Cop for the biggest win in his, in his life. But, like... I, I, like he, they had no. <laughs> what do you What do you think I should do tomorrow? <laughs> Dude, that, that, then Coleman went up to Chuck and said, "Hey, I'm fighting Fedor tomorrow. Uh, how do I get out of a leg lock?" Like the <laughs> night. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the night before, he says, "How do I get out of a leg lock?" And he showed him how to get out of a leg lock. Like the night before, like how fucking crazy is that? Like. Those guys were, that was like when like men were, were men. Like, you know, like they were just, it was different breeds. And, and the art form was not quite as evolved <laughs> as it is now. I think that also yeah. might have played a little part actually told me a story about Randleman too a long time ago. He told me uh, Randleman was uh, getting ready for one of his pride fights. And you know, he used to jump up and do his little high knee thing like Tito does. They jump yeah. up and kick him up real high. 
he said he was doing that in the back and there was, I guess, like some pipes laying down behind him and he didn't notice it. And he steps on the fucking pipes when he lands. He lands on the pipes, fucking slips, cracks his fucking head on the ground and knocks himself out and had to pull out of the fight. Oh, no. the fight. oh fuck, man. That's crazy. That is- I know. Oh, my God. So, are you right, rolling I- a joint right now? Are you, Vince, are you rolling a J right now? I think he's shaving his pubes. Yeah. He, he's like, fucking- are you- I got like... I got like a fucking chunk of skin I'm trying to rip off my hand right now. Oh, I'm like, hey. that w- uh, all right, let's take a look. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I thought well, he was going to be like, I have a mess. wart on my dick or something. Uh, I mean, you were really, you were really. Up, so I'm not sure what they are. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know why I wasn't there. I don't even remember it. I don't know what happened. All right, so we have a girl right here joining us. Marina Kaufman, by the way. Uh, Marina Kaufman is a fighter from Kentucky. She's an amateur. She's- Ohio. How are you? She's Good. she's three and six, but she's a badass fighter. I watched your fights, by the way, and from your first fight, which looked like it was like a fight you see in middle school, of yeah. two girls slapping each other, to, <laughs> to where you are now, you are fucking so much better. Like like you're you you gotten really good. So c- congrats on that. Thank you. Oh, she have video. Oh, there she is. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. All right, now you're here with Vince Michelle, Ween Dog, Greg Wilson. By the way, she's got really hot pictures online. If any of you guys want to see uh, Ween Dog, uh, if you want to show, you can share a screen. Marina, oh, okay, Coffin, I love Marina to do Marissa this. Coffin. Uh, Marina, what? I love to. Oh, now all of a sudden Vince is fucking showing his body. What a dick. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm on my computer now, so I want to see. Now, did you watch Vince's fight against uh, Jim Miller? Um, probably. Oh, wow. You made, no. really good, you made a really good impression. <laughs> That's a no. Now, now, you recently tweeted out, you've been having a rough month. You tweeted out, guys suck, my boyfriend dumped me. Uh, is, he, is he there right now? Uh, no, we, we didn't get back together, luckily. Okay, so what happened? Uh, I don't know. I think I just make men go crazy. Uh, well, nice. Like, uh, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are, you, what are you doing by making these men go crazy? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm just a lot to take in. All right. Well, listen, I mean, you're a beautiful girl. You're a single mom. You live it's in like Kentucky. Nuts, aren't you? You're one of those crazy, those crazy girls, aren't you? <laughs> you, you live in Kentucky. Uh, you're, you're a badass fighter. Do you have any fights scheduled? Uh, I've been, I've been talking to a few different promotions and like trying to set something up. Cause whatever I do next is probably going to be like a pro debut. Um, so like nothing, nothing like signed officially yet. Just a few options. Okay. Well, let us definitely let us know. And let's talk about the Sugar Sean fight from last week. Uh, Ooh, we'll Marlon Vera. All right. So you were happy about Marlon Vera. My whole thing with Sugar Sean, he was looking great until he rolled his ankle. I mean, he was, and Vera was staying at range. Do we count that as a win? I know that Vera hit, kicked him, and he didn't check it right, and his his ankle gave out. So technically, he should win. But would you count that as a win or a loss, Vince? Hey, man, a win's a win. But uh, I think – I honestly think that uh, he was he was already injured coming into the fight. That's what I thought, too. Thank you. Yes. I think he might have been slightly injured coming into the fight, and he got checked. And then I, I honestly wasn't sure if it was his ankle or if it was his knee because it looked like both – it looked like his knee and his ankle were fucked up on that same leg. That, yeah. leg, was just, that leg was just stanky the whole time. Now he's six foot two. He's he's about six foot, one hundred and thirty five pounds, right? For him, yeah, he's a tall, gangly motherfucker. I didn't realize how tall he was until the day he weighs, and I seen him. I was like, yeah, that motherfucker's tall as shit. But for him to do those like spinning reverse kicks, is that putting a lot of pressure on his ankles? Ah, uh, no, because he's pretty fluid with it. I don't. I wouldn't say so. He's pretty fluid. He's not like uh, he's not flat footed when he does it. So uh, I wouldn't say so. Now, uh, Marina, what did you think of that fight? Um, I thought it was a good fight. I mean, I've had check kicked before and I mean, if you know, if you're going against somebody that knows how to check kicks and knows how to like go for those little bones, like, I mean, it, it only takes one for like what to happen that happened. It's, I mean, getting your kicks checked is the worst. It's almost as bad as getting kicked. Really? Ah. Wow. I would almost rather eat them usually than check them. Yeah. Getting, get, getting your late, your kick checked hurts more than, more than yeah. anything. Wow. Okay. So this guy, so. I, I, I did not realize that. Now, a lot of people are like tweeting about it. Like, uh, uh, what's the Cody Nolove says, some men are not made for war. <laughs> and, 
And then Henry Cejudo writes, I had two fights with, uh, with a broken hand and I still win it. And I said that like fucking Ben Asker had 19 fights with no hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I saw that. I mean, that was good. But I mean, look, he didn't stop the fight. Herb Dean did. So you can't blame O'Malley for that. I mean, he was trying. Um, but what I do you think? Like stopped it kind of prematurely too. I, I, don't, I don't know if O'Malley was raw because I couldn't really see his face or his eyes, but I feel like Herb stopped that a little early too, honestly. He did. He did. Um, so what do you think happens to O'Malley from here, uh, Ween Dog? Um, well, I got to see, we all have to see what the actual damages are to his foot. I know he, they got an x-ray and they determined that it, there's no break. They have to do like an MRI to see if there's any ligament tears. And I'm not sure how long that recovery is for ligament tears in your foot, maybe up to a year or, or so, wow. but that sucks, you know, because he just, you know, suffered like a year long suspension for a tainted supplement. So this is just another. Is that the same leg that he fucked up before too? Yeah, it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. It's, it's probably a reoccurring thing. He probably never fully healed himself. Now, so Brad, what would you have happens. done if you were O'Malley and you got your leg checked like that? Come on. <laughs> I would have been like, I'm good. I'm done. I'm, you know. uh, I've been like, thank uh, you. I'm going to grab a beer. I'm done. Uh, uh, Don, <laughs> Fry, uh, uh, Don Fry Wilson, what, what would you have done? I'll tell you what I would have done. I would have ripped the other guy's leg off and tied it to my leg and used that as my leg. Wow. <laughs> that sounds like a, a, a man, a fucking a very strong man. That's right. I don't know. I'll just take I someone else's leg. I actually would say. Uh, Don Fry Wilson, what would you do to a woman like Marina on a first date? Oh, no. Oh, man, come on. I mean, obviously, you take her to Chuck E. Cheese, someplace she likes. You know? <laughs> you want to get her a nice, you know, pie? Nice, uh, she probably likes uh, the cherry Coke. I'll get her a nice cherry Coke, you know? And then maybe some putt putt. It'd be a hell of a night. Night of her life. Wow. And I, pro I proposed to her under a windmill. A windmill. <laughs> Arena, are you okay? You seem kind of depressed. Everything okay? I don't know. Marriage is where I draw the line. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can hear. Now, you, the other night you said, will someone please send me $80 to watch the fights? Did anyone do it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you sound so fucking depressed about it? <laughs> well, well, people, people say, like, post, like, say stuff like it doesn't work. I'm like, I mean, half the time I'm just saying shit just to see, like, if someone's going to send it or not. And if they send it, then sweet. And I have 80 more dollars than I had. Right. Oh, now, now, some people were like, start an OnlyFans account. But you're not going to yeah, do Yeah, I was just about to say, do you have an OnlyFans? <laughs> no, I like, I like doing the Patreon because I can, I can do more than just, like, hey, look at me. Like, here's hot pictures. I can kind of post more training stuff. And I don't mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a problem with OnlyFans and the girls that are doing it. But I just... Yeah, maybe if the fight career doesn't work out, I'll go to that. <laughs> great. It's a great backup plan. <laughs> hey, man, Virgin's going to spend their money anyway. They might as well take it, right? Hell yeah, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm getting paid for pictures I was already posting for free, so. Hell now, yeah. Greg, Greg, if you were a girl, would you have an OnlyFans account? Oh, yeah. I mean, it would be the least successful OnlyFans account, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I'd be like, hey, I made 38 cents today. <laughs> <laughs> he just calls it short, short round visuals. Uh, uh, yeah, short round visual. That's right. I'm a short round. Vince, have you ever subscribed to any girls' OnlyFans? No, I haven't. I get late, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I, I when, like plus when like when you have a wife, I'm I, I hard to I, I explain that to my wife. Yeah, uh, the what's this for two dollars <laughs> going to? Uh, well, you know that girl that I'm always watching on TV. Uh, I want to watch the train more, and yeah, that would go really. She graduated great. through college, and I paid yeah. for it. Fuck. <laughs> All right, now Ro Rosenstreak versus Dos Santos. This guy is the most frustrating fighter, Rosenstreak, because he loses, and then he just knocks people out. I like, missed that fight, but everyone's trying to compare mustaches, and I, for the record. My mustache smoked JDS's mustache. Oh, yeah, 100%. His mustache is like a little kid's mustache. Now, yeah. You, if you would have cut that, you would have lost a bunch more weight. Like, how much do you think that mustache is? <laughs> I mean, maybe a pound or two, right? But uh, I made it to 56, so I'm good. Yeah. I was waiting for John Dodson to pop out of that thing. Um, <laughs> now, fucking, there's a guy, Dodson. He, he's so good, but I don't know what his issue is. I think the guy scared, yelled him. I think he scared him when he yelled at him between the rounds. You, uh, you think so? Really? Or, were they like yelling at him? No, I'm just kidding. But I thought that was kind of funny. 
I mean, I just I thought he looked old. I mean, uh, he, he did look old. old. I know. I know. John Dawson looks old. You think John Dawson looks old? He literally looks like he's twelve years old. No, but no, not- he's built like he's twelve years old. He moved like he's hundred and twelve years old. <laughs> they, I mean, he, I mean, he only threw eleven punches in the first round. Like, yeah, he just. It just didn't look like classic John Dobson. I mean, whatever you thought, remember, it didn't, he looked older and slower. That's all. There's nothing wrong with it. It's natural, but that's what I thought when I saw him. Now, Marina, Marina, I was watching, I was reading uh, articles about you. So your first fight, you took on a few <laughs> hours notice. You never. Yeah, it, was like, it was like a day, like a day or two, maybe. You never fought before. I mean, aside from one time in school, I never had done anything like that. And you just, the next day, got into a fight? Yeah, like they, like someone messaged me on Facebook because they had been trying to match this girl and people kept backing out and they messaged me, they're like, how much do you weigh? And I just so happened to weigh like enough that it was like where it worked. And so then I drove like, like six hours into Michigan or something by myself and went and fought this girl full rules. I had to go to Walmart and buy shorts, like didn't have a mouth guard, like just showed up like, hey, here I am. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what the fuck? No what corner. That's the new definition of DTF. <laughs> down, <laughs> down, to down, down to fight. But you never had any kind of training, never took a class or a striking I, class? No, not, like literally nothing. No. I wasn't even athletic. Like I was weird in school, so I'm not even like athletic. I was just like, I guess. I knew I'm, it. I knew it. She's definitely one of the crazies. <laughs> I mean, nobody told you this is a bad idea. Uh, no, why? It Why was it a bad of, idea? Because she never fought before, and she drives six hours to fight. But you've been training, right? You've no, been training no, to fight? No, no. Oh, no. You just happen to weigh 110 <laughs> pounds or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> I want to meet, wait, no. I just want to meet the guy. Happen. I want to meet the guy that ventured out into Instagram <laughs> with one goal. To find a girl that weighed 110 pounds willing to fight. I mean, far as Facebook, you're a shitty listener. Okay. Or Facebook, whatever. <laughs> like, what? Who does that? Like, who just says, like, wh- why would that's you? That's pretty awesome. That? Marina, that guy's resourceful. That's, that's kind of back before, like, it was like, I mean, it wasn't even like fully sanctioned back then. Like, it was like pro, like full rules. Like, so kind of more like, un- like not like super well known yet there, because it was. Were you, like, getting, were you getting paid for this? Did you get any money? No, it was just it was before Michigan was even sanctioned. So why couldn't you just find someone at like 7-Eleven and fight them there? Why did you drive six hours? To <laughs> I, I literally just got the offer and I was like, mm, that sounds fun and did it. Like, like someone like calling me, like, you want to go to the movies? I'm like, sure. I'll, I'll now, see you there. It's funny. Now you lost the fight. I like uh, that attitude. I like I broke that. Nose, I broke nose in three she, places, like three different spots. But she ended up catching me with a choke. I mean, like a choke because I didn't know how to defend it. Right. Now, after you, um, while you're getting choked out, I think your head, were you like, this is a bad idea? No, I was like, I need to actually learn how to think the right way. Maybe I should rethink my life decisions. No, no, I was like, yeah, I can do this for a living. Was anybody in your corner for the fight? No. No. It was just- that's, that's honestly pretty fucking awesome. That's a pretty cool story to tell. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I mean, I would never have gotten involved with it otherwise, so it's kind of funny. That's, I mean, I give you a lot of respect, but at the same time, I was like, like, your parents failed. Uh, <laughs> it, it took them a while to get on board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, look, you found your calling. It's something you were interested in. You're like, you got a shot? You're like, yeah, let me try it. Yeah, you know? I never, I, I I never would have been involved otherwise. I mean, there are a lot of people that train that never fight. You know, There's you fought with train never training. Fought. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, you have people that train really hard and then they get hit and then they decide they don't want to fight anymore. So yeah. at least I knew I could take a hit before I dedicated my life to doing it. So you broke the girl's nose in three places? Yeah. You no, know, because I, I watched the fight. It looked like you didn't have the wrong offense, but you were throwing punches like... like yeah, you know, I mean, those, those, those crazy windmill punches hurt, though. I'm like, they, sure. like they, look, they look horrible, but I mean, I was throwing every, every ounce of my body weight in those. No, you throw low bodies, putting your head down, swinging those windmills? Yeah, I had I didn't know how to throw a punch. I was like, I mean, it was no, it was you, literally about like a high school like bar fight. Like, so I mean, it was ugly. Up, will you bring up Maria Kaufman versus Maria ha- Hammond? Uh, we we could watch some of this fight. And I'm not making fun of you. I have nothing but respect for you, Marina. I I think you're awesome. I just think that I've never seen an MMA fight like this before. It was uh, crazy. Oh my god, I, I've I've never seen anything like this. I, I don't don't worry. We're not gonna get 
<laughs> take this down because nobody owns this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody <laughs> owns this. Nobody will take credit for this. <laughs> I, I don't like to take credit for it. Who was but, like, the opponent? I mean, uh, her, name, uh, her name is Maria Hammond. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, you've come such a long way, though. Like, I watched your latest fights, and like, you're like a real fighter now. Um, yeah, I mean, when I was doing that, I literally wasn't like I was even even for a while after that fight. It took me quite a while to actually find a gym that was legitimate and that like um, that I could train at. So even for like that's why my record is the way it is because for the for a first while I was just fighting because I liked to fight and I didn't I didn't have the resources to actually get in a good gym. So then I finally found a gym. That I could get everything I needed, and so it's been. Um, well, it's been listen, better, but where, really are you, where are you from, and where do you train now? Uh, I'm from Toledo, Ohio, and I train. Um, I'm kind of all over the place, like just getting in wherever I can in Ohio right now. Okay. Now, are you one of like, those? Are you one of those girls that when you like a guy, you punch him really hard, like, but affectionately? You're but like, that's your that's your way of making sure he can take it. Yeah, I'm like I'm like a bully in school. That just I don't know how to be nice to people, so I just bully them and punch them. Green dog, you better. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Oh, right. the screen sharing is disabled. Oh shit, hold on. Ready? And... But I have it right here. Okay, here we go. Boom. Are right, we good? Okay. So, all right. So, Vince, I want to get your take on this. Uh, this. All right. So here you go. This is crazy. So this is Marina. Uh, they're going at it. Oh Ooh. yeah. Oh fuck yeah. Well, you know, it's a professional's, you know, cage. <laughs> yeah, it's, everything they did was like, it was a really well-run show for not being something that was like. Um, oh, you're grabbing onto the cage. Look at awesome. you. I didn't look know at you could do that. That's how blue And you I keep was. swinging. You keep swinging. She yeah. couldn't take her down. This is kind of like a Don Fry Takayama fight a little bit. So, you, I mean, this is this is entertaining as hell. I like how her I opponent is wearing Lululemons. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my you God. look you look great. I mean, well, all better than the I, other Thank people. you. I'm, it's one of my shining moments of my career. I mean, for somebody who's never fought before, to and then go for a guilty. I was literally YouTubing like chokes and like how like how to do submissions like minutes look before the this. fight on YouTube. <laughs> That's amazing. I gotta tell you, if I took a fight, I wouldn't look this good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, th that girl, like, that girl was super tough, too. Like, she went on to, like, after this fight, like, actually, like, had a pretty good amateur run in her career. And so, I mean, it was pretty cool. Nah, you, you did great. You did Look great. at you. You're sweet. You're tough, man. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, you're like, fuck it. That was the only oh, thing I was doing for me, that I, I was tough. Are you All right, Joe. Nice. Like nice story, right? Right? Yeah. Joe, if we could also share some of her uh, Instagram pictures, that'd be great too. I have that up too. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure. I, I've got those already. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure our fans will love that. I'm just, uh, uh, I'm just trying to get some skin off my hand, like, uh, like uh, you know. So let's talk about Felice like Herring. Was. Felice Herring. She didn't look. Like I she thought you were circumcised already. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, so Virna, this girl Virna versus Felice Herring. Man, I don't know. Felice looked like she didn't show up for this fight. No, I was thinking she was. I don't think she should fight no more. She looked terrible. Um, well, how can you really say that? Because the fight wasn't that long. It could have just, you know what I mean? It's just. She got I think she was just a little bit out of it. I think she was just a little out of it. Yeah, it seemed like it. It seemed like, but it's. It just seemed like. But see, when you say she. Greg. I was gonna say you say she looks out of it. I thought she looked like uninterested. I thought she looked unmotivated. I thought she looked. Like she was not into it. I mean, possibly that. I mean, but like, like we all have off nights, right? And our sport is still unforgiving. And you could, if you're off just in the slightest bit on a fight day, like it's gonna cost you everything, right? Well, it seems so, like yeah. that's like Felice's whole thing. It's like either she goes on a crazy great run and gets the confidence, or she goes on a slump, and and it's ninety percent mental, probably. Or 99%. Be, but, but Felice Herring is a beast, man. That chick is a beast. Like I've I seen think her she seems to do well under pressure. Like she does better when she's under more pressure. I think this this fight wasn't really doing anything. It didn't have a whole lot of benefits for her. So I think she just, I don't know. I think she just does better when she's got like, um, more on the line. Yeah, I'm surprised she even took the fight. To be honest. Yeah, maybe. But that girl that she fought was the Invicta lightweight. The Invicta. Yeah, she was a tough girl. Yeah, that girl looked really. She tough. looked good. And she's, she's a, a she's a like. 
she's a badass jits a jits fighter all right like, so here we got well, now we're at, uh do you have any friends it seems like they're all selfies uh i'm kidding no i, I literally <laughs> no friends. that's the key to happiness the key to, there you go <laughs> i feel like you're like fans want. i feel like you're the girl that uh that, that ca- people use as a picture to catfish wean dog uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, if people want to use my pictures to get money, then go for it. If you can, people are that, whatever. All right, you look, you look very depressed here. What's, what's, what's going on in this picture? Uh, I was probably hungry. I look pretty thin. Yeah, wake up, wake up, <laughs> hangry. I was He's probably just hangry. hangry. Yeah, hangry. How come there's always two of you? Because <laughs> I, can never, I can never fit the full picture in one because the Instagram chops your picture so small. Wait, I can never mom, can wait, is that your mom behind you? What? This is my sister. Oh, it's your sister. Oh, sorry. Hey, how's it going? Fantastic. Are you, are you, are you, a, are you a fighter too? You look like you're angry. No. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the Stay Rose podcast. <laughs> okay, no more of these pictures. Now it's weird. It's yeah, weird. that was okay, very fine. awkward. Um, right, so, <laughs> can you warn us next time family members come in the All right, so. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, the fights this week. This girl, Cheyenne, is fighting. She just came on the podcast. She's fighting on the Contender Series. She got kicked out of her school for beating up all the bullies. Like, she went into school and just beat up, like, nine kids at once. Uh, she's pretty damn awesome. Well, her fucking school is lame. She's fighting on the, uh, on the Contender Series uh, this week. Nice. Now, Friday night, Bellator has some good fights. Once again, you won't know about it because they don't believe in commercials or advertising. Or letting, no, anyone, or letting anyone know about their fights. Um, but Ryan Bader is fighting Nemkov. Nemkov's a guy that beat Phil Davis, uh, tapped out Rafael Carvajal in one round. Uh, this beat Phil Davis? Yeah. He hasn't lost in six years. And the last guy he lost to was uh, that guy that just knocked out um, – he knocked out Oldemir. That guy Carl Al- Albert Kitson. No, but he, no, but he, no, his last loss was, was uh, Jiri. Wasn't it Jiri, his last loss? That was before. He lost two in a row. Oh. So this dude, Nemkov, I'm picking for the upset. <laughs> I think he's going to beat I think he's gonna beat Ryan Bader. I really do. I think, uh, I'm going to say no because I don't know who he is, and I like Ryan Bader. But he's Russian. He's Russian. He is Russian. Uh, so, And then uh, Julia Budd is fighting Jesse Miel. Uh, Julia Budd's a very underrated fighter. No one t- ever talks about her. She's a great fighter. She lost to a cyborg, but there's no shame in that. Um, I think she wins this fight. Uh, the girl she's fighting is coming off two split decision wins. Uh, one against Elizabeth Phillips. We've got another girl. I think, uh, I think Bud's got this. I think Bud could beat everybody except for cyborg in that division. Um, Roy Nelson <laughs> is fighting this, this week. Roy Nelson's still fighting? Yeah. <laughs> Roy Nelson. Uh, uh, yes. But he, don't worry. He hasn't improved in any way. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need to say something right now. So right. I saw him when I was, uh, when I was trying out for Ultimate Fighter, I went to, uh, shit, what was the gym? I think it was Throwdown at the time. Yeah. And he was there training with Forrest. And I've never seen someone go into, into, into the gym to train and leave so, and train and, and be gone so quickly. He literally did like three five minute rounds. Against the wall of of some of some just weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life in yeah. MMA training, and then was gone. And I was like, "Oh my god, is this really how this guy trains? Is this how he keeps his well, dad bod?" He, he, <laughs> he has a gym in his house in his kitchen, so he could be <laughs> near the food. I, I'm not kidding, huh. Roy Nelson. Uh, no, he doesn't, dude. Don't I swear, you. ask him. Uh, so he Listen, fighting- every time he has a fight, there's a construction site wondering where the fuck he went. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Marina, don't ever get implants because you don't want your, your boobs as big as Nelson's. Uh, but here's the deal. So, uh, that was boobs are great. Uh, all right, I'm taking that part out of the podcast. All right, so anyway, so uh, <laughs> based on the zero reaction from everybody, um, so Nelson's fighting a guy, Valentin Modavsky, uh, who's nine and one from Russia, beat Linton Vassell, beat Javier. <coughs> uh, Excuse me. I hate to say it, I think Nelson loses this fight. I think, just like Marina said, I don't think he gets up for these kind of fights. He just There's a lot of Russians. There's a lot of Russians fighting, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, my boy Shane Krushton's fighting. No, he's not. What happened? He had to pull out of the fight. He got injured. Oh. 
fuck, really? Yeah. He blew his he blew his AC joint out. Oh. Uh, all right. Well, Sydney Outlaw is fighting Adam Pic uh, Piccatoli. Good fight. Wait, I, I like is that Sydney. a girl fighting a dude? No, no, no. Sydney Outlaw is a, a the guy. He he just fought Ben Henderson. He was homeless. Trains out in uh, Florida. They got ATT. Really I nice guy. Cindy. You said I thought you said Cindy. I was like a Cindy. <laughs> oh, no, Cindy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then uh, he's fighting Adam Piccoli, Piccoli, I think his last name is a really good fighter. Now, in the UFC, Frankie Edgar is fighting uh, Munoz. He yeah, really lost to Aljamain his last fight. Edgar's got to win this fight. Who do we like in this fight, Marina? Uh, I don't know. I'm probably going with Munoz. Why? I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I can't really explain why. She likes the little brown boys. <laughs> Is that, is that true? <laughs> I just, I just think I don't know. I feel like Edgar hasn't really put on like an amazing performance in a while. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I Frankie hasn't looked that great in a while. Hopefully this is he comes back. I, mean, hopefully he, I feel like with all the virus stuff going on, you either have people that are coming out of it like better, and you can tell that they like were sharpening things up, or like they were kind of like taking time off, or like you know, I, I just feel like it depends on what he was doing. It seems like he, from a, his Instagram, he's been training really hard. From, from his Instagram, he's been training with the like the Rutgers wrestling team or jujitsu, training with some killers. Vince, are you setting up like a, a cam shot for you or something? What's going I'm, on? No, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to do some drugs right now. I'm, I'm trying to open my water bottle. Do we have to give you tokens? Uh, so <laughs> uh, this is we'll, my OnlyFans. This is my initiation to my OnlyFans. I just want yeah, you guys to know. Well, fucking we dubbed your OnlyFans. Sign me up. Oh, uh, uh, Vince, who do we like? Munoz or Edgar? I'm going Munoz in this one. Um, I feel like Edgar, Ed, I mean, you can't really count Edgar out, but I feel like he's kind of fizz, starting to fizzle out now, and I'm not sure what it is. I think it's, I think it may be a mental thing for him because I feel like he's got all the skills, but I feel like he's just fizzling out, man, and I'm going Munoz. I'm going to pick Munoz as well, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> probably by knockout. Greg. I'm actually going to go Frankie Edgar because every time I bet against Frankie Edgar, he makes me look stupid. So I'm going to go Frankie Edgar. I'm going with Edgar. Does that? Uh, more importantly, Marina, are you on Tinder or Bumble? or uh... <laughs> no. Farmers only? Farmers only? <laughs> you can find me on Christian Mingle. Are you really on that? Yeah. No. Farmers only? Farmers only? No, I, I feel like there's enough of that in my, like, my Twitter already. Like, I don't want to go to a site that's like purposely like just people. No thanks. Now, what happened with the boyfriend? Why you make him so crazy? Um, I don't know. I just think that I'm like going places in my life that doesn't that didn't match where he wanted to go. You know, like I just I'm not looking to like settle down and like you know like just do nothing. Like I'm like trying to hit the peak of my career and just like travel and do all this stuff and I just didn't match up. How long were you guys uh, dating for? Oh, uh, like two years. Wow, long time, yeah. long time. Oh, so that's the, that's the make or break time right there, the two year mark though, that's the make or break time. And now, uh, now Vince, how long have you, uh, you and your girlfriend for? Almost a year. Wow. Oh, getting close to that two year. I know, one more year, one more year until I get a either keep her or fucking shit can her. No, no, no. <laughs> shit can her. That's what every girl wants to hear. So, what a romantic, Vince is a total romantic. Dude, I'm such a mush. Now, after <laughs> now, look back in my day when I used to be in relationships and we break up, I would kind of like I had to get out of my system. I go out and just bang whoever was available, basically, just just to clear my head. Man or woman? Uh, no, woman. It's man or, or, or animal. Or or, animal. <laughs> thank you, Greg. That's not hacky. Okay, now uh, now, <laughs> fucking, now now Marina, uh, when you and, and your man broke up, were you just like fuck it, like who wants them, or were you selective? What? No, I'm, I'm, I'm selective. Okay, good. So you weren't just... Most what? people aren't interesting enough to begin with, so why would I even pursue it that far? So it doesn't make sense. Where did your criteria start? <laughs> um, Not being a piece of shit is usually a good start. No, I'm out! out. <laughs> <laughs> now, who on the MMA Roasted panel would you most likely uh, take on a date or let take you on a date? Out of all of us here in the call. It's got better than got the mustache because he could beat every other guy up on this podcast. That's true. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you put 
put me on the spot like that. I don't even know. Dude, you're a Viking, man. What the fuck's wrong with you? I can beat I can beat up everybody else in the fog. Like, come on. That's yeah, a now, valid argument, though. I mean, that's one of the criteria is you have to actually be able to, like, somewhat fight, so. Yeah, what if, what if, what if you guys go on a date and she just beats your ass? How's that going to make you feel, honestly? Think I'll be that. extremely erect. <laughs> Uh, like a man, a woman that can handle her own. I get it. Wow. <laughs> so, all right. Now, how old are you? What are you? Twenty three. Twenty four. Twenty four. Uh, you live at home with your parents. Uh, I live with my sister. Live with your sister. She seemed very angry. What? What does? What does she do? Um, she just she had a baby about angry. two months ago, so she's like a new mom, oh, and she's that's also why. pregnant. She's also pregnant again, so she's a new mom and a whore mom. Whore Jesus. Mom. Yeah. She's a new mom and a whore mom. Yeah, did you say new mom and a whore mom? Hormone, hormone, hormonal. 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 I think she's a whore mom. I was like, well, I mean, she, she did it first. She, it was on accident. Oh. Yeah, you can't, you can't claim an accident twice. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> now that's not now, true. That's not true. <laughs> okay, so and now you're a and you're a single mom, right? Now, how's the how's the baby daddy? Is he cool or is he kind of a dick? No, me and him have a really good relationship. Um, we split 50-50. Um, we're pretty good friends, actually. So it's just when he wants her, he has her. And when I want her, I pick her up because we live close to each other. So that's, oh, that's cool. <laughs> nice. That's really cool, actually. That's that's a rare thing, honestly. Yeah, I don't even go after him for child support. So he's pretty lucky. Damn. <laughs> I don't even go after him for child support. You don't need it. You got only fans. He should pay child support, though. It's his child. Yeah, but he, he has her just as much as I do. And we share so much already, like. It, it, it wouldn't even make sense. He's paying. He is paying child support, just not to you. Yeah, I mean, he just we go fifty fifty on everything. Right, that makes sense. That's great. Yeah, so yeah, that's really cool. cool. All right, there you go. Now, are you like the hot girl in your town right now? <laughs> Hardly. I'm kind He's of like Ohio, a hermit. Yes? I'm like a hermit. There's not. There's not really. I'm at the gym or I'm in my house hiding. Hmm. Sounds sounds who fun. You, who are you hiding from? All right. So Talking basically, buddy. we got to. We got to catch you in between on the <laughs> pretty, way. Pretty much. <laughs> Is there a 7-Eleven you like to stop at uh, nearby? I have, to, I have to be careful. Those, uh, one of those, my Twitter followers might find me or something. So I got to uh, keep I mean, my location off. Now, how many dick pics do you get sent? Smart. Smart. Actually, I don't think, I think I've gotten like two. It's actually been surprisingly low. Good. Yeah, I, don't think I get more dick pics than that right now. I don't know. I think they know that if they sent me them, I would probably send it to their parents, so they don't send me them. Wow. <laughs> send it to their parents. You hear that? Yeah, the little boy sent me. I'm uh, clear, okay. I'm clear. All right, because I, it seemed like I was trying to hook you up with Kelvin Gastelum. Because <laughs> when, when, you, when you were like, I just got dumped. I'm lonely. I need somebody. And, and then I, and I wrote, like, Kevin will take you out for dinner or something. But then you say, he, didn't, he like didn't respond. Do you think you scared him off or what? What happened? I don't, I don't know. I mean, he's probably not into girls that are taller than him. Ooh. Oh, oh. 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 And she probably doesn't have enough meat on her bones. He's a hungry guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, now, what weight do you like? How tall are you? I'm 5'6. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's kind of short. But he's about, he's about oh, okay. All he's right. So. Nice. Now, are you now? How's your fight camp? Do you have a good, you have a good team? Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing a lot of jujitsu right now, um, and then um, I'm hopefully going to be going up to California here soon and training at like a tenth planet up there. I've been talking to some people there. Um, but I'm just trying to do a lot of like brown stuff so I can catch up with like my stand up. What uh what, what what belt are you? Uh, blue. Your blue belt, okay. And your striking's gotten a lot better. You that one chick you were just lighting up, man. Uh. I watched that one fight against who were you fighting against? I wrote it down. Uh, there was one girl that you were just you were just teeing off. You almost it had her. Out. Megan, it was probably the king of the cage fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that fight. Yeah, you were just. And there was one fight where you guys were both going for heel hooks and punching each other with the other arm. Like, I had no idea oh what a heel hook even was when I was going for that. So it's. They were they were on the ground hammer fisting each other. It was, uh, which sounds a lot more perverted than it is actually, Greg. Okay. Totally. What was the difference between hammer fisting and hammer blasting? Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about, right, Marina? Mm hmm So you didn't know what you were doing when that was going on? I know. I, I think I've had, like, a heel hook or, like, a knee bar, like, three different times in my career, like, where I, like, probably could have finished it, and I just was like, what about, like, I just, I don't know what I'm doing. 
But but what about now? Do you know now? Yeah. Oh, that's good. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. I All focus right. so much, I focus so much on my stand up for like the last like two years really that like my ground is like behind so I just need to catch it up because these girls just keep taking me down and laying on me and I can't do nothing. Now you seem like the kind of girl that will like post all these crazy pictures. You, you know, you talk a good game, you take out, you, a guy goes for a kiss. You're like, not, we're not ready yet. And then you make him like wait <laughs> a couple months. And is that a fair assessment? Yeah. I've been called prude all my life. So yeah. yeah. See, see, that's the thing. So, so like, meanwhile, and then like on the way home, you're posting like a naked selfie and the guy's like, what the fuck? I just spent $300 on steak. Uh, but, but that's good. <laughs> I mean, if I was posting it all out there, people wouldn't pay for it. I mean, I feel like, all, I feel like all these girls are posting like all these photos and it's like, why are you posting shit like that for free? Like, I'm going to wait until like I'm famous and then maybe, maybe I'll leak something for like a ridiculous amount of money, but you're not going to pay $5 to see that. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Well, don't, don't leak anything. Just, okay, just save it for the man, you know? Yeah. And if you do, if you do plan on leaking something, send it to us so we can pre-approve it. You know, you don't want to make any like career decisions. that's going to now, harm now you Greg, would you be able to be our PR, PR, now, PR, now, PR approval? Now her Twitter is actually more crazier than her Instagram. Some of these pictures. Uh, would Greg, would you be able to date a girl that posts pictures like this all the time on Instagram? Yeah, you know, because I, I need someone that can defend me. Right. And that's what she, you know, a girl like Holly Holm, you know, it's like, yeah, go get him, honey. Go show him what's up. Uh, what about you, uh, Vince? Well, uh, I'd probably be the one taking the photos for her, honestly. So, but what about all these guys that are hitting up in her DMs or they're like posting pictures? Hey, when, when they're buying our lunch, we're the ones laughing. Uh, okay. Yeah, th this is the way I see it. Like, if I'm dating a chick or something like that, like, obviously she's a good looking chick, right? I'm not gonna, like, as shallow as it sounds, I'm not gonna be dating lagoon creatures. So if I have a hot chick and she's, if, and if, if I'm dating a chick she's not getting hit on, then I'm gonna start questioning myself. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Well, that, 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 that seems very deep of you, Vince. All right, now, all right, so now, <laughs> now, all right, now we have OSP versus Alonzo Menafield Friday. Now, Alonzo's a guy, we had him on the show, Greg. Here's a guy yeah. that the UFC should be getting behind. He went to like 13 different group homes as a kid. Couldn't read before the age of 13 or 14. He was like in, in and out of- Oh, they still can't read. He was, he was, uh, he, no, this dude was, he was adopted by a Christian family from Africa. They like took care of him in South Central. He ended up getting a football scholarship, uh, almost went pro. Now is he's- Is Colin Kaepernick? Now he's like 10 and one. I think this is the blind side movie, isn't it? it, it right, it really is the blind side. <laughs> Uh, but, but enough about Daniel Cormier. Okay, so, so um, <laughs> oh, so, no. his new no, he, no, he, it's not. He's no longer known as Daniel Cormier. Now he's known as Mini Mini Whitaker. Some people are calling him D. Can't see. Uh, oh now, gosh. so he's fighting OSP. Now OSP is a guy that lost to Ben Rothwell, but almost beat him. It was a weird fight. He's fighting. I don't know why he's at heavyweight. He shouldn't be at heavyweight. He should be at 205. I think, or, at, uh, or are they fighting a 205 or heavyweight? He's heavyweight. Why are you fighting before? Yeah. Oh, no, this is a 205? Yeah. Yeah. He went oh, back okay. down. Okay, I'm an idiot. All right, so it's a, it's, a, it's a 205. I like Alonzo in this fight. You, Greg? I'm absolutely, listen, this is Alonzo's chance to make, to, you know, plant the flag, to say, I'm here, pay attention to me, know my name. This is a great fight for him. Ovin St. Pru is exactly the type of guy. He shows up, he beats this guy. People start talking about Alonzo. I, I love him in this fight. Uh, Marina? Uh, I'm probably going to go with OSP. I just think that there's a lot going on with that division right now. So it's like a good chance to like kind of step up. So I think he probably has a little bit more like, it's, it's a good time for him to like do something if he's going to like progress in his career more than he has. Well, here's the problem with Alonzo. He's like 10 and one with 10 knockouts all under a minute. So the only fight he ever went the distance was against Devin Clark. He got really tired. He said his wife started yelling at him. He said, this is he's like, I told you to go out and train uh, uh, during the fight. <laughs> um, but OSP always wins by fucking Ezekiel. What is it? Uh, by Von Fluke choke, right? Yeah. I hope he doesn't yeah. think about that damn Von Fluke choke. Uh, Vince, who do we like in this fight? I'm going to OSP in this one just because I don't know the other guy and I like OSP. Wing dog. I'm going to pick Alonzo via KO in the first round. I, I, I Boom! Think, 
I think you're right. Now, a girl that I can't wait to find out is, is this girl, Agapov, who, uh, that girl was like six foot two with like heavy hands. Jesus. She's like, right, she takes it up American top team. She's like a 150 pounder. She's fighting Shayna Dobson. Dobson's like, I think that record is like three and four, but she's good. She's like, like the best three and four fighter in the history of MMA, basically. She's like half that size, too. She's three other, and five. Other than Aaron Pico, maybe. Uh, who's got another weird record? Doesn't reflect how good he is. Uh, who do we like in this fight, Marina? Um, I don't remember how to say her name, but the Agapov. Yeah. Yeah. The Amazonian. <laughs> uh, Vince. Um, I don't know. I don't. Honestly, I haven't seen either one of them fight. Awesome. Um, so I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna give it to the tall Amazonian just because of her her body. She's like Brazilian, but uh, okay. Oh, uh, she's also Brazilian. The same height. Yeah, Wean dog. Um, I'm gonna pick Agopova, but then again, I, I I really hate picking women fights because I feel like they can always go either way because a lot of them just what go to decisions. Doing? Plugging in my phone charger. Oh, I was like, are you showing? I'm, like, I'm, I'm unpacking all my shit. I literally am, I, I haven't even unpacked since I got home. I just got home late last night. Oh wow! Now, all right. Now, did so you haven't seen your you haven't seen your girlfriend yet? No, I've seen her. Oh, okay. Is she there? Not now. Oh. Who are those girls that were like all about you on Instagram? There were the, the girls, maybe girls you train with. This is hot Mexicans. A bunch of hot Mexicans that were like, we're so proud of you, Vince. I, I don't know who you're talking about. Is it the one that I took a photo with in my story? Yeah, they were like, I puppy and. I love it. He's like, I don't know who you're talking about. The one I took a picture with in my story. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's like, no, like that's maybe a... you know what he's talking about. That's what I'm saying. No, that's uh, my manager, Jason. That's his wife. And then his friend, Sonny. And then uh, it's actually uh, Shelby, Sean Shelby's girlfriend. Oh, Elena. I was going to say. I was like, damn, who? I... Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I'm not talking and then about. Also, and then Jason's wife's uh, best friend, Edgar, who's gay, but he's really funny. I was fucking with him so hard that night. Oh, my God. I love fucking with gay guys. What do you do? Hey. I just I just play gay games. <laughs> Thank you, Marina. Your face said everything. Uh, uh, got Don Fry, do you like fucking with gay guys? I don't fuck with gay guys. I don't fuck with them. Gay guys are always trying to fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> now what about Bob Sapp? Does Bob Sapp fuck with gay guys? Well, the gay guys, those are gay guys have their own thing, man. Gay guys <laughs> like to hit it and quit it. I'm all about that. I understand that lifestyle. <laughs> Have you ever talked to a gay guy? No, I'll, 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 tell you, I'll tell you a funny story, though. So Jason's wife, I was telling yeah. them a story about how I went to a Mexican restaurant and they made tableside guac because apparently I'm so fucking, so, so shelterly ghetto that I didn't know every Mexican restaurant makes tableside guac for you. Yeah. So they were like teasing me <laughs> about it. They were like, they were like teasing me about it bad, like real bad. And I was like stretching, I was stretching and I was, I was fucking with Edgar, her friend, and I was like bent over touching my toes. And I turned around, I was like, stop sticking my, I was like, stop looking, staring at my ass, you fucking weirdo. And then uh, she goes, she goes, you can touch your toes. I'm like, yeah. And I found out Jason's wife cannot touch her toes. So now I tease her about that. I thought, me personally, I thought girls were born able to touch their toes like they have vaginas. But I found out apparently that's not true. Wow. So, I'll, so that whole night, I was testing all the girls, seeing if any, seeing if making sure all of them they could touch their toes. I, 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 I good trick. I, I heard, I heard gay guys love it when you say. I heard gay guys what? love it when you say, "Stop staring at my asshole." That's fucking. That's always gay guys love that. They love it when you yell at them for staring at their asshole. That's. You probably just, just drink me to fart or something. <laughs> that's awful. You can touch Marina. You can touch toes, right? Um. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's actually not very easy, so it's embarrassing. Did you sorry, a, sorry, no confidence in her voice right there. Did you down, <laughs> like, I, I, did you down Lexapro for a podcast or something? You look very fucking, everything okay? What's going on? I'm just stoned. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now I'm jealous. <laughs> I barely had a chance to vape before this myself, so I guess. <laughs> Get the fuck out of you, fam! I didn't get a chance to vape. What a, a pop! Well, I mean, weed vape, not like like, like you know douchebag vape, like weed vape. <laughs> By the way, Hector Lombard and Shang had a political debate on last Wednesday, which went exactly how you thought it would oh, go. Uh, sure. but sure. Could you understand a word of it? It there sounds was... like it would just be two guys yelling over each other all the time. <laughs> That's exactly what it was, and I've been getting lots of people on both sides. More he more people support Hector though. And like of his course. Fans. So then, then Shang, uh, a lot of Hector fans. 
out there. Well, because Shang, Shang's a cool guy, but he's a little deluded with stuff. He watches too much media. Uh, I, I don't think Greg's the guy you want to talk to about that. By the way, oh my I, God, you one of those two? <laughs> All right, like, stop. You mean go do back mean to fighting? De- you mean that's decent it, people? It. Do you mean a We're decent human? No, yes, I'm one of the no. decent. <laughs> Uh, Marina, are you voting for Trump or are you voting uh, for Joe Biden? Um, Trump. <laughs> I like it. Hey, <laughs> look, you can't be perfect. So Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Wait, why are you voting for Trump, Marina? I, I honestly couldn't give you a reason other than I don't like the other guy. And honestly, I don't, no. I don't honestly get into politics too much. I just, it's a shit show. Like, it's, what, 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 what does my opinion matter when it comes to politics? I don't know shit. There you, there you go. The hey, you're sitting now with a fat ass you'd have. <laughs> the people have spoken. <laughs> well, listen, this is. Well, hold on, hold on, Greg. Are you, Joe, are you voting for Joe Biden? Yes. You Are you fucking serious? <laughs> I'm going to Yes, I'm serious. How fucking retarded listen, are you, bro? You are not voting for that fat Dude, ass. Dude, unfortunately, listen. Unfortunately, have, he's the pedophile. lesser of two. He is the lesser of two evils, and he's not the pedophile. Clinton's the what? pedophile. Come on! Oh my God! What have you? What have you been looking at now? Right, what fucking rabbit it's, hole website? They're all pedophile. You're one of those Biden, guys that they're all pedophiles. Biden, all right. Okay. How about this? Biden's creepy, but not a pedophile. Like, can we, can we agree with that? Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. Like smelling girls' hair. I mean, he is creepy. I don't think he's, he's not fucking Trump, creepy. listen, Trump likes golden showers, but that's not why I'm not voting for him. We all like golden <laughs> showers, God damn it. Marino. <laughs> Do we? So. I don't, I'm not on that band. <laughs> I, I've never had a golden shower, at least not on purpose. Oh, I mean, like, I had my kid pee on me by accident. If uh, someone pissed uh, on me, they're getting fucking head kicked. That's all I'm going to say. If somebody what? If somebody, somebody pissed on me, they're getting head kicked. You would head kick a, all right. I, I want to see you have a next fight, so we're not even going to even go there. Okay, so listen. <laughs> uh, Vince, congratulations on your big win over Jim Miller. It was Thank you. you. Marina, where can people find you? Um, Twitter and Instagram. I know, but your actual handle might help. At? <laughs> at, no, at no Mercy Kaufman. All right, listen. Uh, thank you for being a good sport. Okay, I know we could be a lot. Uh, thanks, Marina. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, guys. No problem. Love to have you back on. Uh, Greg, anything you want to say to close the show? No, I don't think so. It was a fun one. Oh, it was a fun Wean dog, you? Yes, before we end, we have to thank the contributors who have donated to the show on YouTube when we, go, when we do the live uh, premiere thing, which happens like every Monday, Tuesday around 5 p.m. People come into the live chat and they donate. So I want to thank Americans' favorite Brazilian. These are their YouTube uh, channel names. And Native American Chicano. So we have a very diverse you know, fan base. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, <laughs> they're, they're not voting Trump. <laughs> <laughs> they're after smart. You guys are awesome. Thanks for making me laugh, guys. Appreciate it. Take Thank care. You. All right.